Yo, what is going on, guys? It is Randy here, and we are finally back for GBA semifinals, or I would call it the Ultra Moon Conference Championship game. And of course, we are taking on TTM Jolt, coach of the Kansas City Draw Chiefs. I forgot to include this image. There it is. Uh, yeah, let's move this here. My bad. <laughs> That's something I forgot to do. Let's leave it right here for now. Um, actually, let's do it below my cam. This is good for now. But anyways, uh, make sure you all give him a look. You know, second week in a row, we have to face a TTM member. And hopefully, we can keep both of them out of the finals. Now, if you guys did not catch the playoff game two weeks ago, make sure you go check it out. But if you, I mean, you'll know what the result is, obviously, given based off today. But I just want to say thanks to, to um, big shout out to Danza, though, man. He's he showed, he showed a lot of class last week. You know, he didn't get hacks or anything like that. But uh, we were we were the only game that had both sides uploaded. And obviously, everyone had their reasons not to upload their side, like the other guys. But like, I mean, it's all like obviously they had reasons. But I just gotta show him a lot of respect because he got it up quick. You know, someone like if you lose in a playoff game, you know, you're probably disappointed. You know, you put a lot of thought into it, and you maybe don't get it up on time because you recorded it the day before. But he got it up on time. You know, he post con. You know, he's he's great, man. Good sport. Really, really appreciate him doing that. And, you know, it was a great game, and I wish him the best of luck. So uh, this week we're taking on his buddy Jolto, and I'm sure he's coming for me because if you guys don't remember, we hacked them in week two, and it was some pretty significant hacks. We, we dodged flare cannons. We dodged mega horns. Um, we got a – we didn't crit anything, I don't remember, but, like, it was pretty hacksy. Now, my build was pretty decent given his build um, against them, so I had a pretty good matchup. But this time around, he's free to – He's free to change it up, man. He's got all the versatility in the world. His team is threatening, but I have an equalizer, and that's Eveltal. I think Eveltal can help me win this game and carry me to the finals. However, it's going to take a very, very good team to do that. So real quick, before we jump in, um, this could very potentially be the last builder of the season. So I want to give a quick plug to my other stuff that I do. I've been streaming a lot more on Twitch. I've been doing showdown with, with, with friends like Leo's been in there, uh, Kelly under the radar. Um... I do Ultra Sun and Moon viewer battles on Wi-Fi, so if you want to just come hang out, we're trying to you know make the push and make the grind towards Ultra, towards Sword and Shield, get more people in my Discord. You know, I want it to be a nice, friendly community of battlers that whether or not you've been playing since you know Gen One or you know you've been like not out of the battle scene for a bit. I encourage you to join the Discord because you know we're building up people, and I'm trying to you know become a popular streamer for Twitch, come Sword and Shield, doing battles and all that. And despite how you feel about the, about the game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Twitch will be popping in the first few months, and we'll see what goes down there. Um, but I'll have my Discord and my Twitch plugged, as I always do. Feel free to join those. It's pretty active when I stream and all that. So I um, just want to thank everybody for the great season so far. You know, it's been a not necessarily a dream to be in GBA, but it definitely was a goal of mine when I started doing YouTube. So um, my first season went pretty successful, regardless of what happens uh, in this battle today. But, um, you know, we're looking to make the finals, man. We're looking to prove some people wrong. And hopefully we can do it. So with that being said, I want a big, and also a big thanks to our front office this season: Granto Boy, Doctor uh, Diabetic Raichu, Aaron Barden, um, Ollie, and Doctor Wigglytuff. Youngster Bill was kind of inactive, but he's been doing other things. So I mean, I thank him anyway. And then big thanks to Zazo for helping me with this build as well. Um, he pretty much, you know, helped me build an idea, and we were gonna go from there. But real quick, let's go ahead and recap what happened in our first game. So this is the build we brought against him the first time, right? We had Orby Veltal, we had Reflect Type Mono Shadow Ball Ladia, Scarf Ape, which covered pretty much any sort of fast Magirna, whether it be Shift Gear or Scarf, which ended up being. We had a Roar Toxic Suicune, which actually had a pretty decent matchup against them. On Optimized Spread, yeah, I get it. Um, we had the Yachi uh, Rose Raid, which was pretty interesting. It wasn't HP Dragon, though, it was HP Fire, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then we had the the Near Max Fizzdev Hippo. We had Stealth Rocks, Whirlwind, Earthquake, all that sort of thing. So. Um, some notes about that game. Hippo was a really annoying for him to deal with. Like, his mana fee was a bulkier set. Like, if I read more of Def, I could have actually te te technically walled the mana fee, but he had Toxic, and Skull could burn and all that. So, um, he struggled with that pretty a, a lot in, in, in the first time we played. Um, and help him with some hacks. We dodged him stuff. I misplayed with the Suicune on the double out. Like, I didn't know he was Scarf, but I could have figured it out right then and there. Um, Infernape ended up doing a lot of work to him late game as well because he ended up being a offensive Mew and he didn't, um, like I injured stuff pretty well. Like Hazard Stack was not very good for him. Like he didn't really appreciate Hazard Stack and he tried to do that to me and it didn't work out. Um, 
keeping Evaltal on the back, which is always a threat because, like, being Scarf Magirna, he can't switch into me. So, I mean, he could, but, like, it won't take it very well. And eventually, with Hazards, it's going to be worn down very quickly. And but for him having potential Scarf and or, like, Mach Punch stuff, you know, he definitely played that carefully. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a... Uh, it was a relatively tough game, but I had a good build, I think. I think given what I what I fought against them, because this is what he brought. This was his pace. I went ahead and looked at his video and, you know, brought it in. Um, he ran a Scarf Magirna, which a lot of people I talk to thinks is kind of a weird bring. And I could see it coming again, but I just don't, I don't think he's going to do it. I, I, I really do think this time will be Calm Mind Plane Split. I really do think it will be this time. Um, I doubt Shift Gear comes. He knows I can bring Scarf Ape. But I will say, I don't really have a nice check to it, Shift Gear or Scarf. I'm kind of banking on him not doing that. and Because I know Jolt, man. He builds he builds fat. But he knows that I know that. So, like, he could just bring brutal offense and just shred me. So, that's one thing I am kind of worried about. But I think I can handle that pretty well, I think. Because that was my my only loss this season was to straight up offense. And that was Aaron, uh, Aaron Zhang. So, I feel like he might take that note and just try throwing it at me. So, I got to play that. Play around that. Aerodactyl came, it was near max defense here. Um, he And one thing I've also noted, and we've noted, that he doesn't really run offensive arrows. Like, he runs really, really fat ones. And he suffers from four slot syndrome in this game heavily. He wants to decide if he either wants Roost or Taunt or Earthquake, Rocks, Edge. He, he struggles, you know. A lot of the mocks that I did, they had Roost, and he was either Mono Stone Edge or Mono Flying. And that gives me an opportunity with stuff like either the Eveltal or the um, Hippo Walls and... You know, uh, there's another mod in particular that it helps out with. Um, I think it was like Metagross potentially if he's not running Earthquake, and sometimes even Latias if he's running like Model Flying and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's it's a rough you know mat moves for him, but in general, it's it's annoying to play against because it's a nice ape answer as well, especially if he brings Roost. But this one in particular wasn't a great uh, ape answer, even though he was like near max defense. I guess it wasn't near a good one. He had Bulganium Z Scolipede, which I could see this set coming again. I really do think he could probably bring this again. However, I feel like he might bring Z Mew, Mew and then just bring like a Sash Scolipede. I don't know. He brought like a really weird mana fee set. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. Like we lost a Telgol mana fee. The build that I brought last time, we lost a Telgol mana fee, dude. Like look at my team. I had the only thing I had was Yachi Rose Raid. That's all I had. Everything else got destroyed by it. So we took a risk with that and banked on him not doing it. So he could try it again, but I don't know. Um, he, he brought this uh, Groudon, which Groudon is a big threat against my team. You know, it's it's a pain to deal with. and But fortunately, it was a non-factor because it missed his Precipice Blades and all that. And then, of course, Mew was sort of a non-factor as well. Um, one of the Cobra Berry. The one thing I really do hate about prepping for his team is that with Mew and Mana Feed, he has ways to outspeed Eveltal. He has ways to, you know, creep my Eveltal and outspeed and starting out with either Ice Beams or status moves like... This Mew, I would be okay if this Mew showed up again. I'd be completely fine with that set. Like, I I'm down for this one. Trust me. Uh, I would be completely down. But with all that being said, let's jump into my semi-finals team build. This is what we're leading off with. We have Eveltal. Actually, I want to go over this set last because you can tell that it's, it's definitely an, uh, an important member of the team. Uh, you can see the set, but I'll explain it later at the end and, and show it, tell y'all what it does. Because it's, it's pretty insane, man. It's, it's, it's really whack. It's pretty insane. So... Leading off, we have Max Defense Hippo. Gives me a Groudon answer. Gives me the, um, the Groudon switch in, Scolipede switch in, Arrow switch in. It's there, it's there to check all his physical threats. And it definitely does with ease. Now, you may notice I'm not running Sand Stream. I'm running Sand Force. Now, a few things. Um, Sand Stream is kind of annoying for my Ape, my Latias, Eveltal. It's kind of annoying. Um, but the big thing is, is that I like Sun. I really do. Like, he, if he casts Sun up on a switch in then, like, he can't pivot into Magirna on my Eveltal, because if I Heat Wave and Sun with, with my potential Orb or Expert Belt, he can't do it. Like, he just, he can't do it safely. And then, of course, there is a chance I could burn, too, you know, if he goes into Arrow. Um, people have been making some pretty aggressive Arrow switchings when I did some mocks, so... Um, I like Sun. I do. I don't see a big problem in it being there. He knows that if he, if he runs Solar Beam on Groudon, it's a complete waste of a slot if I bring Sand. So, I don't think he's gonna do that again. I don't think he's gonna... Expect me to bring, uh, I don't think he's gonna bring Solar Beam. It's just a waste of a slot. He's better off running Toxic like he did last time, or just running SD or an extra coverage move. Maybe just Fire Punch, probably, but I mean, like, I don't, because like, like I said, Solar Beam is a complete waste if I just come in on Sand. So I don't think he's gonna risk that. Um, I'm bringing Sand Force. I like it. You know, you could say Veil, but like, I don't switch into Nine Tails anyway. So, like, Veil is not really a big threat, I don't think, because Nine Tails kind of sucks. And 
I have defog, so I, I should be fine. But again, max defense, running Stone Edge over Rowan this time because I want to be able to hit Arrow. If he brings a similar Arrow as he brought last time, he won't have Roost. So, and if he has Roost, then we can eliminate one of his offensive attacks and try to, you know, dec decipher what set he is. We have Infernape running Choice Band this time, and this is a pretty a pretty spicy bring, as my boy Root would say. Um, but Blitz, CC, Mach, and U-Turn, a pretty standard on paper. But the, the idea is, is that besides Arrow and the Scully P, this thing can just, you know, tear apart his team, especially um, early game. Early game breaking could be very nice to help out with the ball toll. If I can eliminate either the Mew or Mana Feed, that's good. Having to, like, eliminate that speed tier that outruns me. Scully P outruns me, but you'll see later on that, like, I don't fear Scully P whatsoever. So that's not a big threat. Aerodactyl is, like, the only thing I fear. But even then, Aerodactyl is something I do kind of want to keep around because you'll see what, you'll see the item already. And I'll explain more about that at the end. But again, Band-Aid was just really clutch, man. Like, Band-Aid Mach could be really cool, too, to pick off Arrow, pick off any of his sweepers. But Band-Aid CC and, and, and uh, Flare Blitz, it's really hard for him to uh, switch into. He would have to bring the same core of Manaphy and Mew and then Aerodactyl extra to be a sponge to be uh, to my stab attacks, you know? And then again, with Sun on, on my side, or Sun on up, up on the field, Bandit Fire Blitz becomes even harder to switch into. Now, Grano takes it pretty dang well, looking at Calix, man. He takes it pretty well, but... Um, besides that, he struggles, and that's really all there is to it. Ape is pretty solid. We are taking a big risk by not bringing Scarf to check the shift gear slash Scarf Magirna, but the Bandit seems pretty fine. I don't think he's going to bring the fast Magirna. Next up, we have AV Metagross. Now, this was originally going to be a Kasi Berry to scout any and all Magirna sets that would come in the field. Ideally, this is my number one switch in. The first time on Magirna, Shadow Ball does a respectable amount, but I can find out what he is when he comes in. Volt Switch pivoting would be very annoying for me. But if he's Volt Switch, that means he's probably not going to be Scarf, because we saw last time that Scarf ran a uh, dual Fairy Stab. Oh, actually, he did run that, so he ran dual Fairy Stab. But if he's running Scarf this, then he can't touch uh, Metagross, which is something to note about that. So, um, And I guess if he drops Flash Cannon, then I guess he'd be fine, I guess. But I don't know. But anyways, the point is, it checks it still pretty well, and, you know, I have speed to outrun the ground on, but, but potentially, because uh, in some of my mocks, he was pretty slow, and maybe get off some chip damage, Thunder Punch to help out with Mana Fee, so he can't just set up on me for free, um, also hits the, um, what else does it hit? I guess it only hits the Mana Fee, I probably could drop that maybe for uh, Grass Knot again, but I don't know, I'll talk to somebody before the game. But, you know, the idea is it checks Magirna. It also gets off Bullet Punch, Chip on potentially Magirna as well. But it's low on the Aerodactyl, the Scolipede, um, the Mew, you know, wh whatever it could be. And it's just a nice sponge to its other special attackers, which would be maybe like the, the Meloetta, I guess, or the, um, mainly the Magirna. That's mainly what it's here for. <laughs> I think having one mind for a Magirna, like, you know, you know, bringing one mind just for Magirna, it seems like a pretty smart thing to do because Magirna is stupid. Next up, we have the Megalodias. Now, this is my number one mana fee answer. I live any plus three hit after Stealth Rock. Uh, Thunderbolt will be able to do over half, and then I can Revenge with Infernape or potentially Eveltal if I were to Icy Wind, depending on the situation. Icy Wind's a pretty cool tech because we want to slow down the arrow. We want to slow down the Magirna. I mean, not the Magirna. We want to slow down the Mew. We want to slow down the mana fee and try to pivot out or just get killed and then bring in something else. Now, um... Besides that, like, Icy Wind seems pretty cool to slow stuff down and, like, Ape coming in too. Like, if we slow stuff down, like, it helps us. And it seems weird. Like, I was, like, at first it was Bulldoze and we were walled by Breloom. But after Breloom stuff went down, we said, no, nah, we're going with Icy Wind. And, um, in theory, Icy Wind probably isn't that great either because Breloom can still get up a sub. It would be a slow stub, but it can get up the sub. And I'll see if I end up sticking with this going into the game. We're playing, like, in maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour. I'm not sure. Um, but... You know how it goes. Uh, but, hold on, sorry. I messed up, messed up, messed up. Okay. But, anyways, yeah, I mean, this is my main mana fee switch in. Um, I guess it could be a Mew switch in as well, but I mean, I don't really touch it back. I can just Icy Win and then pivot out. That's really all I can do against them. Mew's just so annoying because, like, status spreading could be a very legitimate thing he wants to do because if he just, like, paralyzes my Evolta or something, that's just a pain. But I don't know if Jolt's going to play it like that. He might, though. I don't know, but. Again, mana fee switch in. I don't think I could do anything to Magirna anyway. I'm not going to run Reflect type this time. I'm just going to, you know, work with what we got and hopefully it works out. Um, next up, we have the Sash Clefable. Now, this was originally Life Orb on the first build, but, you know, I wanted some more. I wanted some Breloom check, and by 
this being just like a cool mine, it's a cool little lure, I suppose. Um, Grass Knot does a crap ton to the Groudon. Thunderbolt does a good amount to the Manaphy, and then my other two attacks, you know, it's pretty understandable. Flamethrower from Magirna and the Scolipede, and then Moonblast hits the rest of the team for neutral or super effective damage. So, with Magic Guard, obviously, no matter how much you want the Hazard stack, I'll be immune to the stacking, and I can live one hit, and this is a nice security blanket for Magirna, for Mew, for Arrow, for anything. Pretty much anything that gets set up or out of control, which his entire team does get set up, so it literally could check anything. Um... You know anything if I needed to. So Clefable is a nice little cool set. You know I'm hoping it can actually do something. But that leaves us to the final mine, the mine that we drafted at number three overall. <sighs> the mine that I'm less relying my shoulders, my season, my season's hopes on Eveltal's shoulders. Man, I cannot talk. But we have weakness policy Eveltal. Now this spread here is pretty ridiculous. We can live a a uh, Z Rock Slide from Scully Pete after Stealth Rock. We can live a Stone Edge after Stealth Rock, I think. We can live a, um, we can live pretty much any super effective hit he may have that isn't Z move. And like, actually even then we still take, I think me would have to be like Z Thunder to kill me or something like that. So the idea is, I could even take a Dazzling Gleam from Magirna if he's not really invested. If he's fully, if he's fully invested, I can still take, but if he's fully invested, Fleur can and I die. I can also take a Fleur if he's like not fully invested so if he's some weird like call mindset like we talked about i can uh like heat wave take the flur and then like heat wave again or that goes for dazzle pretty much the whole thing like if he switches into me on the first heat wave and if he's really fat he can maybe potentially volt switch or go for a faster dazzle now i won't get the weakness policy before i get the second attack because i'll be faster but and the chance that I have to 1v1 it, this allows me to do that. But the main goal is for this thing to sweep, man. Like, it, it, in my mocks, the only game, the only times I won is when this thing came through. I was literally down 2-6 in one of my mocks, and this thing came back and won. So, it, I have to play extremely careful with this. Because if this thing goes down in the game, and it, like, if it goes down at any point in the game, I think I lose the game. Straight up. I don't think I can win because I just don't have... Um, the firepower. Now, I'm probably exaggerating. Infernape slash like Clefable can probably do some things, and maybe with Metagross too. But realistically, this is my main win con. You know, it's my it's my go-to mon. You know, I've used it all season. There's no reason to ever leave it on the bench because Dark is really a hard type to switch into. So, I mean, like, it's a threat, man. It's so bulky. It's super strong, especially after the weakness policy, dude. Like. It's a cool set, you know, obviously I don't have the, I, I can't do Zazo justice because I didn't explain the set very well, but you guys can tell that this set is looks really good on paper and I can take some super effective hits pretty well, even after Stealth Rock, like Scully Pete and Amok did like 60% with like Z Rock Slide and I got like almost all my HP back um, after I tanked it and ended that plus two. Now again, the big problem is that Mew and Manaphy are faster, or they're probably going to be faster given my, my speed, so... That's the main issue. Like Mew, we'd have to play a mind game. Is he going to run status? Is he going to run an offensive Z move? We don't know. Like that, that's the big thing I, I fear about having to play this late game. That's kind of why we have the speed control on Latias. That way we don't have to risk that. But obviously he could just switch out. Like, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing he could do. But I mean, it, it's, I don't know, dude. Like the chip also is useful as well. So we'll see. We'll see what goes down, guys. This is the team. It's a little whack, but I, I piloted it pretty decently well in the, in the mocks, but this is the semi finals team we have for jolts the game should be going up tomorrow this is being recorded on the 13th on saturday so y'all should be seeing this later on tonight and then those of you who wake up and see it from maybe if you're in the eu or in australia or wherever um, you can catch it like whenever you wake up and then the game's gonna be later on that day so uh, or maybe that night i guess i'm not sure how the time zones are right now um but yeah guys that's the team man i want to thank everybody for their support all season long I'm probably not going to do a recap video if we lose today, but I will say that um, if I lose, I kind of want to talk to the winner or the loser of Jolt and not Jolt, the loser of Lars and Leo and maybe do a third place game. I might do that. Um, whoever, it depends on obviously who wins. So um, if that happens, I'll probably talk to them and potentially get, if they're down for it, of course. So, but with all that being said, guys, thank you all for the support. Make sure you check out my links down below the discord and Twitch, and I will see you guys later on today slash tomorrow for the GBA semifinals slash ultra moon conference championship game. I'll see y'all then go Rockets.